Hi, I'm Natalie Manuel Lee, and I partner with my good friend, Dorian Renaud, who is the CEO and founder of Butterskin. We wanted to highlight the stories that continue to shape how we see ourselves, to shine a light on our inner beauty. Here is Beyond the Surface. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I love your home. <laughs> you know that this is not my home. <laughs> I Come cannot. On. There's multiple levels to the living room. Multiple levels. Ah, jeez. Some may know that we, or may not know, that we've been friends for over a decade. Yes, definitely over a decade. Also, I would like yeah. to put on record to everybody that you owe me your life and your career. <laughs> I read lines with Lamorne for his role, New Girl. She did. And? It, and I, I booked it. I booked it, and according to her, I owe her uh, a ton of money. <laughs> and I said, this is your form of payment. To be here. To be here. I have a $150,000 uh, appearance fee. Oh, do you really? This, I'm okay. doing it for free. Well, there we go. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> <laughs> you are an extraordinary actor, oh, comedian. And a lot of people know you as Winston from New Girl. Yes. How did you find your love for acting? Ooh, you know, I gotta say, it had to be when I was a kid at church. I used to, I found myself mocking the preacher all the time, like mimicking him, whatever he, I mean, he was also a character, you know what I mean? You know, and then in, in black churches, the, the preachers are characters sometimes. The suits they wear, to the isms that they have when they're on when they're in the pulpit, it's a they're they're relaying a message and they have to sometimes make it more entertaining, mm -hmm. and they get big. Yes, and, they do. And so when I was a kid, you know, one of our, our preachers used to wear pink suits or purple suits or green suits or blue suits, but they always matched his socks. They always matched the shoes, his cufflinks, and he would always slow down when he had a thought and try to make it seem like he's pausing for uh, emphasis, but he was really pausing to try to figure out where he was in the Bible. Like he didn't find, he missed his place, so he'd go, and the Bible says, <laughs> ah, <laughs> that Bible. You know what the Bible says? What does the, what does the Bible say? <laughs> and he would have to go and find oh his place. God. And when I was a kid, I clocked it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I used to do it all the time, so I used to make do impressions of him. And then, you know, people at church would encourage that. They said, you know, that's something you should go into. And, mm. I, and then I completely, it went in one ear and out the other because I was a kid. I started playing basketball, you know, as I was getting older. Wasn't as good as I thought I was, and yeah. so I had to figure out something else to do. And um, in high school is when I realized I should be, I should be uh, doing theater. So yeah. pretty much church was the igniter or it exposed your gifting yeah. of acting. Yeah. And in the industry that you're in, you have a plethora of uncertainties. You have a plethora of unknowns mm -hmm. from going from one job to the next, from the yes to the no. Yeah. How do you stay rooted in knowing who you are in that uncertainty? Uh, you know, I think I never thought about it. You know what I mean? I never said, how do I keep figure out who I am and stay in that place and, and navigate this. I just, w when you do what we do, it's just knowing your talent mm -hmm. and trusting the talent. And so if there's ever, ever find yourself in positions where you don't know if you should be doing it, you don't know if it's the right thing to do, maybe you're not comfortable with what they want you to do, don't be so afraid of not getting the job because you know how good you are at what you do and you know there's always another opportunity right around the corner or you know you have the ability to create an opportunity for yourself. And so for me, I, I'm, always, uh, I, I'm always in the headspace that I know I'll be fine, mm -hmm. you know? I, know? I know I'll be fine. You know, I, there are a lot of roles that I, that I wish that I had. There are, there are a lot of positions that I've been in on sets where I wasn't very comfortable. There are a lot of things there are a lot of jobs that, you know, I got, I got, this is a real thing. I got offered a job and where someone wanted me to play a, a vampire slave, a vampire sex slave in a gimp costume with a, with a ball gag in his mouth. And I, this is no joke, 
I got offered this part, and this is before I did anything dramatic. I was doing New Girl. Did you audition for it? I did not audition for it. It was like I was talking to my agent at the time about trying to get gigs and figure out how, what I can do to build my, my dramatic material because mm. the only pe people I knew me for comedy. And like, well, this, this role just came in as an offer for you. You really think you should do it? And I'm reading the script, and I'm like, which character is it? And they were like, well, he doesn't have any lines just yet. And as you read the script, you realize this dude is a, like a, when I say slave, I mean it in, more, in multiple ways. I mean slave like a sex slave, like I'm this dude's sex slave and he walks me around on a leash, but also I'm his slave slave where he whips me. I forget the name of the script, but what? I was like, I read, I called my agent and I was like, are you out of your damn mind? Wow. It's like, well, they're going to give you lines. And it's gonna be really, it's a fun movie, but it's dramatic and it's, it'll really add to your reel. And I was like, there's a scene, I'm not even gonna get into where the scene was. <laughs> oh my god. And I gosh. fired him, fired him. Did you? Immediately. You know, but, and at that time, I didn't have that dramatic representation behind me. How many years ago was this? This had to be. Two. Where were you in your career? I wanna say I was already on New Girl. Okay. After the first season of New Girl, you know. Um, I th so I, it was around 2011, I want to uh -huh. say, maybe, 2012. And there are things like that because, to be honest with you, I kept, I start questioning myself as an actor. I was like, well, as an actor, you know, I can't judge a character. You know, mm -hmm. I got to, I got to, that person, this gimp, vampire, sex slave right. with a leash around his neck is a character. I was like, maybe I could play it. And then I was like, what are you thinking? Like, mm -hmm. what are you, what are you thinking? And I never... You know, and I never thought that I would lose. Initially, I thought if I don't play this, like, is this going to be a thing? Are they going to be like, you know, we, he's not willing to play the, the part? He's right. not. And I was, then I was like, no, I think I'm good enough to still get jobs. Like, I'm still good enough to create my own jobs. I'm still, I don't need to do that character. You know, and ever since then, I just, if it doesn't sit right with me, I just don't do it, you know. And speaking of this business and the industry in Hollywood, mm -hmm there is a lack of diversity, as we know, mm -hmm. a, a huge, huge gap. And a lot of roles that you book, a lot of your cast members mm -hmm. are predominantly white. Yeah. Do you ever take offense that you feel like you are potentially the token black boy for the role that they always go after? Um, at times, you know. Does that stop you at times, but does that stop you from accepting that role? Or is it like, you know what? Let me just take it on, even though I'm the token black boy. Yeah, it, 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 it used to be. You, yeah, yeah. You, but again, like now, I don't take. I don't. If I don't want to do the role, I don't want to do the role. And I will. And that does play a part in it. You know, the more power you have in this business, the more say you have over things. You know, I, I work with a company now where I where I do some commercials, and sometimes I'll look around at the crew members and I'll go, "It's all white dudes." Mm -hmm. And you know, and I'm and you know, and I, it used to be I'm okay with. That because that's just the system that we, I was in when I first got into the business. Again, I'm just happy to be here. And then you start looking around, and you're like, I don't see no, I don't see no women in here. I don't see no black folks in here. I don't see no brown folks in here. I don't see no, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying? And you're like, what? so you you can make a, I'll make like I'll improvise a black joke, and I look around like, what my niggas at? Ain't nobody laughing? I'm like, oh my god, anybody in the back? Anybody? Hey, no, you know, and so. You start to you know, talk to my manager about it, and she's she's all about it. You know, being an Indian woman, and she's like, we, let's put these in your things in your contracts. Put these um, inclusion writers in there. You know what I mean? Where you have a say over who's working on the casting side. It's a little bit different because you know they're writing characters based on you know whoever, whoever the writer is is basing it on whatever whatever their life story is. If it's based on a true story or if. They've, they've developed characters and it happens to be one, only one black person in it, I'll say something about it. You know, I'll go, does that, you know, it's, it's like five, six characters here. You know, is there, can there be, can there be an Asian man in this? Like, you know, Asian characters in this? You know, like I look at my friends, like my friend group is just like a rainbow. Right. You know, and I go, so if I'm going to play this character honestly, I need to be able to, um, I need to be able to feel like I'm really, I'm in a real life setting, you know, so, um, what is their out. answer to that when you ask that question? It depends on if you have, again, if, it depends on who you are on that call sheet. Mm. Like if they don't want you on this, they go, eh, we, you know, there are times when you, they, just, they just say no. But also you work on projects where you're the first person cast, so you don't know who they're going to, who they're going after. But you offer your suggestions. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think we should get this actor. We should try this person or that mm -hmm. person. I had to put an end to 
some of the characters that I was asked to play based off of the romantic lead opposite me. And it was, it's rare that it's another black woman. Mm. And it was always, and then I started to feel like, I was like, man, there's like three movies in a row they want me to play opposite of someone who's not black. And I was like, and it doesn't mean white, it could be any other race, but I was just always like, I wonder, like, it's, it's like a streak. It was like a, like a you know. Do you think they almost target you because that was potentially what you did prior? Are they looking at you like, you know what, we can, Lamorne will say yes to this. You know, I don't think so, only because, only because, you know, like, if you look at, like, New Girl, I was fortunate, my first, I think my first, my first girlfriend on New Girl was black, Callie Hawk. Mm -hmm. Um, but then my next girlfriend was Asian, Brenda Song, and then next was Persian, Nassim Padrad. So they, they switched it up on New Girl. New Girl was, was you know, uh, collective, but there are other parts, there are other times where it's like the, it's, where it once used to be in real life, like black and white was like a taboo thing. You know, you would, they would never dare show a black and white couple on television, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day. That was just something you just didn't see. Um, and then it became, then it became, you know, kind of commonplace. You would see it in movies a lot. Then it became like, well, why can't we have a, why can't we just have like a, like a black couple? You know, and I, and I don't have those answers, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But you would see it and you would notice it sometimes where it started to become a little bit one-sided or, you know, I don't know what the, in, if the industry was trying to self-correct itself by, mm -hmm. by doing it. In a way, I don't know if it's a pro. I don't know. You know, I just know that I wasn't comfortable personally only, especially knowing a lot of black actresses mm -hmm. that could have played some of those characters. And I was like, you know, hey, like, y'all think about any of these other characters for that role? Or are we just, is this, a, is this an intentional thing? Mm -hmm. You know, and then I'd find myself walking away from projects, unless if they didn't have a good explanation for it. So you would walk away from projects because of the cast member that is opposite sex of you that isn't necessarily the same skin color as you? If, if the reason behind it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. If they were just casting purely to be like, oh, black guy, white woman, or black guy this, and it'd be like, oh, well, are you to looking- To check their box. To check the box. I'm like, are you looking at, just to be clear, are you, are you auditioning everyone? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If they are auditioning everyone, I'm an actor. Best role, best best performance wins, mm -hmm. which includes me. Like if you do, if you want to cast a white guy over me, I don't I don't care. Like you know what I'm saying? If that if if you're looking at performance based, then fine. But sometimes it's like it they're not. You know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just you know. For example, on Woke, my my uh, season one of Woke, my girlfriend is uh, played by Rose McGyver. A white woman. Yeah. I get people hit me up all the time about it. Like, you want a show called Woke and you got a, what's up with that? And I'm like, well, it's a couple of things. This, this is, it's TV, it's, it's, it's entertainment. You know, again, I'm not opposed to playing opposite <laughs> white characters and, and interracial dating. I'm not opposed to that at all. But I'm saying the, the, the amount of times that you would see it became overkill. And so I was like, when they would ask me these questions, I was like, I was like, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with the character because I'm playing the character and I know why the character is, is white. There was a, it wasn't just like, we're not looking for black women or we're not looking for brown women, we're only looking for white. It wasn't the case. The case was, it was based on a true story. This is based on a man's real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I get these messages all the time when people are like, well, they could have switched it up. And I go, well, then the story's out of the window. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm trying to tell a story about a, a black dude who's, who's figuring out who he is on his political spectrum, on his political journey, who he, who he is as a black dude, what does black mean to him? Is, it, is, is, is dating outside of your race a, a, a fetish? Is it, a, is it, why is it taboo? Uh, what's the history of it? And all these things is you know, what our show talks about. Um, so in moments like that, I'm like, cool, let's do it. Right. The, it. It serves a purpose why you are specifically choosing a race. Yeah. You know what I mean? Otherwise, just, just put characters in there and best actor wins. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, that's the only time I have a problem with it when it just seems like you're just, you're just doing it just to do to it. To check a box. To check sure. a box. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You are, you have experienced a huge transition. You are now a father and you became one during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Tell me that process. Of how the sausage was made? <laughs> well, <laughs> when a man and a woman become intimate, 
um, hormones start the raging. Oh my gosh. Um, seeds start flying. No. Um, <laughs> edit that out. No. Um, uh, that process was interesting. You know, co-parenting. You know, mm -hmm. me and uh, the mother of my, my daughter uh, were not together. We weren't like dating or anything like that. You know, things happen. And so what made a... a, a the most beautiful kid I've ever seen in my entire life. She's so, beautiful. Ah, thank you. And I'm like, you know, the process is weird because I wasn't expecting to be a father. Mm -hmm. I was, I was kind of, I looked at my life as not carefree because we all have responsibilities and I have, you know, family things I deal with, friendship things I deal with, internal things that I deal with, work things that I deal with. But I felt like I wasn't truly responsible for anyone else's. Right life, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's grown, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then you have a, a baby and your whole world changes, mm -hmm. like your whole perspective changes. I don't do, I walk differently. Mm -hmm. mean, I walk slower. I really do. I'm looking out for danger around. I found myself being more of a father, I, like, mm -hmm. like a, like, a, like a, like a stereotypical protector mm -hmm. now where I'm like, I'm just looking, I'm, you know, I'm just always on a, Mm -hmm. a, a pivot, mm -hmm. a swivel. I drive slower, you know, mm -hmm. trade in my fast car for a, for a family car. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I did. It, because it didn't, it, it also didn't matter to me anymore, mm -hmm. some of those things, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, some of those, I, I call them like selfish wants, mm -hmm. you know. The, some of the more luxurious things in life that you find yourself caring about, they like go out of the window completely. Mm -hmm. Because my one objective in life is to keep her safe and uh, and give her the future that, you know, my mom, you know, gave me and then so. So with the highs and lows the pandemic has brought all of us, with it just being a laborious process for all of us, with all the adversities, the trials, what do you believe kept you sane during that time? Red wine and steak. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, man. You know, during that time we had to stay in the house, I, 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 found, that, I found that I was moving too fast in life in general. Like I was always out. Mm -hmm. You know, always having to be at someone's thing or some event, or I felt like if I didn't leave the house, I was missing out on something. I I had to be working all the time. You know, there's always there's always a script to develop. There's always a a character you want to prepare for. There's always a meeting to be had. When when the pandemic happened and everyone slowed down, you realized, bro, no one's out. Like no one is accepting phone calls. Everyone's at home with their families. I was at home with mine, and I just thought. Okay, this will give me time to rest, to sleep more, because I wasn't sleeping a lot. I didn't realize the value of sleep until, hell, until my trainer sent me like a TED talk on it. He was like, "You should be sleeping, brother. This could, this will, this will age you. Mm -hmm. it, eventually, lack of sleep will kill you. Mm -hmm. It will it will stress you out." And so during that pandemic, I was like, "Perfect. I will sleep. Mm -hmm. I will in I will enjoy red wine. <laughs> I will <laughs> sit in peace. I will." I will in our adult lives, know my mother more. You know, my mom was with us during the pandemic. She came out to California and, and stayed. Mm -hmm. um, I got a, t I got, a, I, you know, which was great because she was with us for months, you know, in our house. And so me and my brother. And so, you know, got to talk to her about a lot of stuff that I didn't know about my mom and built a better relationship with her, which was awesome. So it, it just, honestly, it just taught me to like sit still sometimes. And also being a father. Dur you know, during that time, I became a, a, a father. So mm -hmm. I spent half my time, I was co-parenting at first, and, you know, you know, flying back and forth, Texas to L.A. And even when I was there, it would be, you know, even though Texas is wide open. I don't think Texas ever shut down. But I don't <laughs> think so either. But even still, I found myself just, just going on walks, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Doing very like low key things, never putting on fancy clothes. I would always just wear sweatpants and just go take walks. And I felt like, man, this is great. Like this is a much needed break because the moment I started acting, I hadn't stopped. Like I, it, whether I was actually filming or not, I was always thinking about work, mm -hmm. constantly thinking about work and that's not good for your for So your you brain. needed it. Oh, I, w I was gonna go crazy. So you needed the pandemic. In a way, yeah. In a way, I needed, I needed it. I'm, you know, I didn't feel... There are times in my career where I, I, I go without working. Mm -hmm. And you feel 
you go through a range of emotions, mostly negative. Mm -hmm. And with this one, you're not working, but you're, the emotions aren't negative because mm -hmm. you realize no one is working. You know what I mean? Right. And it's a much needed break for, mm -hmm. because you forget what real life is. Come on, yeah. You know, you, uh, my whole world has been performing. That's my, when I say my whole world, I mean, it is all I, I think about. Yeah. All I think about. And it wasn't good because I found myself, uh, I found myself, you know, missing birthdays, not remembering friends' birthdays, people having kids I don't know about, people moving forward and, and real life things back from my hometown that I don't know about, people getting sick that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. And then you, 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 before you know it, real life has passed you by mm -hmm. and all you're thinking about is, Ooh, I wonder if Marvel will call me and I could ooh, be the next mm -hmm. super villain or something. You Do know you know think I mean? that you'll maintain this mentality? Because Absolutely yes. not. The world will open back up and I'll be back on my shit. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. I think that <laughs> you know I Fuck your birthday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goddamn you had kids? I got kids too. No. <laughs> you know, I believe that this pandemic has been a great offering or mm -hmm. a great igniter for a lot of self-awareness, self-awakening mm -hmm. for people. So it sounds like for you, that was the importance of being as opposed to doing. Yes. So do you truly believe that going into the new, going into the 2022, that you know what? This lesson I'm gonna take of, of really truly being in the moment and mm -hmm. not being so focused on if Marvel's gonna call me or this mm -hmm. and that, will you be able to take that? Absolutely. When the world opens back up, because I believe that, you know, I believe that God turns everything for good. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we needed mm -hmm. as a society. Granted, it is painful, arduous, all those different things. But what you just said is so paramount mm -hmm. to our mental health, to our mm -hmm. spiritual health, to our well-being of focus on the being, the yes. rest, to sustain the doing. So... How are you going to maintain that? What, you just find different avenues. Yeah. It used to be, it used to be um, being on camera, being an actor, being a movie star. That was the thing. Mm -hmm. like, that's it. It's the end all, be all, right? And you become obsessed with it to the point, where, like I said, life will pass you by, right? But then you start to, you find, I, like for example, I find myself listening to podcasts all the time. And I'm enamored by some of these hosts. I'm enamored by some of the storytelling, whether it be a scripted podcast or some of the guests on these unscripted podcasts. And I find myself listening to them a lot. And so, and I thought, man, I see a lot of actors jumping in the podcast space. And before I know it, I'm in the podcast space. So now we're doing a podcast, you know, me and some other some cats that I know. And it's, it's a lucrative business, and, but it's more, that, more than that. It's fun and you get to do it at a more relaxed pace. So that's one reason, that's one way I can fulfill my uh, itch for entertainment, my itch for public speaking, tr you know, trying to be funny with friends, goofing off, being silly. I can still fulfill that and not have to stress about certain things because that will still keep the audience engaged in what I'm doing. I can still act when I feel like it. And do, do you feel like you have a responsibility to keep your audience engaged? Because that's a weight too, because it, that more so influences the doing. Yes and no. I will say on one hand, it's what it's what the business calls for. It's what the it's what the it's the responsibility of an actor, you know. But the other responsibility of, of an actor is to be true to yourself. So at any moment, if you don't feel healthy, if at any moment you feel like I should take a break because mentally I'm not there, I need to rest, I should go do something else, I should go direct, or I should, like I said, do a podcast, I should go um, create in some other medium, you have to do that because otherwise you're doing your audience a disservice because you're not who your true self is. You're not the person they fell in love with. Um, a lot of influences happen. You know, to me, you're more pure when you first start in this business then there's a lot of influences around you. It's not that you won't get better as an actor or a performer, because most do, you get more comfortable. But that rawness, that newness that people fell in love with when they first saw you on TV, starts to fade because you get jaded a little bit. You get jaded by the monotony of it all. You get jaded by your, ex your past experiences and you become a little bit scarred and you need a break. 
you definitely need a break to remind yourself why you do it, who you do it for, you know, yourself, but your friends, family, and your fans. Um, and then, so, so it's, so it's two part, you know what I mean? You know, it, it, you can't do it specifically to keep them engaged, but you do want to keep them engaged right. because it is show business. Mm -hmm. You do still have to, like I said before, if you can make money doing it, it's great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I used to always say, I, I would love just teaching acting, mm -hmm. you know, like teaching sketch comedy mm -hmm. and teaching improv. Like, I, and then I thought about it and I was like, Nah, like I, I could do it as like a guest host or something like Why that. Why wouldn't you like, do it? No, I would do it. I would do it all day. But I'm saying that can't be my only stream of income. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it, right. it just, it just, would, I wouldn't be able to sustain that way mm -hmm. if I only did that. But mm -hmm. when I first started, I was like, that's all I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, <laughs> improv teacher, that's, that's a hell of a job because you truly are just performing and watching the younger generations perform and, and you do that. But if that was your only job, you can't sustain it unless there's a shift in pay that I don't know about, but like right. you need to do other things, I think, to sustain um, a living, healthy yeah. living. Yeah. Um, yeah. What piece of advice could you give an actor or an actress that wants to break into the industry but just hasn't? Don't do it. No, no, no. It's scary. <laughs> if you are a five, nine, five, ten, black, kind of funny actor, don't do it, okay? It ain't for you. <laughs> this business ain't for you. No, but um, if I could give them advice, it would be, honestly, and I'm stealing something from, it's, it's just the advice that I always use, but I always, but I also heard it recently on like an actor's round table, and I was like, that's, they're like, if you were teaching a class, what's the first thing you would tell your actors? And it would be like, be, be okay with failing. Fail in front of a, in a room full of people. If, you, if, you can, if you're that confident, at some point, something's gonna be gold in there. You know what I mean? Like, fail, be comfortable, just get, mm -hmm. it's not, again, it's not that serious. Mm -hmm. You know, we put so much, there are real life circumstances in, in everyone's lives that that's, you know, when you're acting, it definitely benefits you to become successful at it so you can, you know, if the finances are good enough, it can help you and your family out. That's, that's a lot of pressure. But when you think about the job itself, it's just playing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in the entertainment space. Play and have as much fun as possible. Um, and don't be afraid to look stupid and look mm -hmm. foolish because you think of some of the greatest entertainers that we have or we've seen, they are, you know, they are one of one. And the reason they're one of one is because they tried. They tried to be bold, to be big, and then they create this uniqueness. You know, when I think about folks like, uh, folks like Jim Carrey, for example, mm. I mean, the guy was wild and weird and blah, blah, blah. And then you go, no one for the history of entertainment could ever do what he does anymore. Because mm. he, just, he just became this thing because he was bold, and I'm sure, at the, in the beginning, some of those characters hit the floor. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he failed miserably at times. I'm sure he walked into audition rooms and they were like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. But like, when you're an actor, you know, I'll put it to you like this. When you, the process of a, an audition is you walk in a room and you have a script in front of you or you read it and or you perform it, you rehearse it. And the director, you think what they're looking for and the cast and director and the producers, you think they're looking for the specific thing that they wrote down. But what folks don't realize that they're looking for something that they haven't seen mm -hmm. because they're seeing 25 actors, 30, 40, sometimes more actors. Mm -hmm. And if everyone's doing the exact same thing, let's say everyone in this room is the exact same skill level as a performer, and we know how to dissect a character the exact same way, mm -hmm. and we go into the room and we do exactly what the script is telling us to do the exact same way, the only thing that separates us now is what we look like, mm -hmm. right? But if you... If you go in there and you perform, if you are five, uh, if you are five dudes walk in the same room, audition the exact same way, or or you all look exactly the same, but one person has a like a lisp, one person kind of has a trait, like a little thing that they do. One person gives you who they are, like they add that human. That's good. Then they're like, I like that. That's good. Because I saw all that. They're all the same. I like this, this, this guy right here. That's a character right there. Mm. And 
we got to keep some of ourselves in, in the our, authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would tell them to just be bold. And be be bold. okay to fail. You have to be. You're good. You're going to. Mm-hmm. Nothing's, yeah. you know, hit home runs all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe if you're Denzel Washington. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or you're Meryl Streep or somebody. I don't know if they've ever failed. But <laughs> like, right. <laughs> Lastly, here at Butter, we focus on self care. Mm-hmm. What is your practice for self care? Water. My practice for self care has to be water, and now it's sleep exercise as much as I can. I get really lazy and I hate training, but I have to do it. Mm-hmm. And um, you force yourself to do it and you just feel, you just feel a lot better um, afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, you, when you don't sleep, you develop these horrible bags under your eyes. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm tired of those things, man. So uh, yeah, sleep as much as I can, eat good. And, uh, and you know, I try to. I, I don't meditate, but I it, I should, because mm. I find myself from time to time meditating, and I do feel better about it. But it's not a daily practice of mine, mm-hmm. and that's something I probably should be doing. I appreciate you. Thank this you. I good. appreciate thank you. Thank you for this. I appreciate you well as done, well. Well done, brother. Oh, thank you. Air high five since it's you know COVID. Appreciate you. I appreciate you.